Thank you, Jesus. Will you lift up your hands to what's heaven? Say, Father, I yield myself to you as a vessel. Use me to your glory. I lay aside every barrier in pursuit of the high calling. In Jesus' name. Amen. While we're standing, if you know that you're not born again, or maybe you're backslidden, and you've never made that conscious decision for Christ, I'd love to pray with you to this, this morning. Anywhere you are, lift up your hands. It's not for everyone. You know that you don't have a vital relationship with Christ as you should have. I wanted to pray for you. You don't have to come out, but anywhere you are, lift up your right hands, and I'd love to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is in this place. It's a testimony. It's a testimony. The presence of God is in this place. So lift up your right hands. Just lift your right hands. Lift it above your head to show that you mean it. I don't have this personal... I know the Lord is here, but I can't say I have a personal relationship with Him. Glory to God. All of you... All of you, raise up your hands. I want you to begin to, you don't have to stand up. You don't have to come out. You don't have to come out. I want you to begin to thank him for his love and his mercy. I want you to thank him for his love and his mercy. All right. If you raise up your right hands, will you please say this with me? And the reason why I'm asking you to say this is that in the kingdom of God, the way you come into salvation is by your declaration. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you because your love and mercy has found me. I believe in your love. I believe that you lived on earth. You died and you rose from the dead for my justification. You took my place. Today, I confess you as my Lord. I will no longer live for any other person. I will live for you as my Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your right hand up, it's important to get the ushers to give you a card. And someone says, why are they giving me a card? Number one, that's our way we can keep praying for you. Number two, we're able to invite you to a smaller meeting to build you up in your newfound faith. So the ushers are walking around with those cards and there's nothing to be shameful about. It's a great thing to feel. Any, any way that is important in your life, you feel a card. You feel a card. You feel your details. It's a great thing to feel. Praise God. I wanted to, so if you've not, if you've not got the card, just raise up your hands and you pray the prayer, raise up your hands and the ushers will come to you. Will you put your hands on your shoulder, on the, on the shoulder of the person next to you and pray this prayer for them personally. That Lord, if there's an area where they need healing or their emotions are troubled, that the power of God will heal them. If there's an area where they need healing, their emotions are troubled, that the power of God will heal them. That the power of God will heal them. That the power of God will heal them. Pray for them. Pray for them. If it's if someone that you know and you're familiar with their struggles, pray. Pray for that area. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, we once again will thank you. Lord, I pray for everyone here that needs a healing touch. I pray that the power of God will reach out to them and really heal. And everyone that is struggling emotionally, that the peace of God will fill up their understanding and mind. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Musicians, how are you? Come, come. All the musicians, come. Come and line up here. Come on, line up here. 
They don't know. They don't know what I, what I want to do. First of all, they are just ready to receive. Okay, stand. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. The one that wanted me to pray for him, I'll pray for him. Then the other ones... What I wanted to do before, I'll do for the other one. Let me have one of the protocols come and stand behind him. Come and stand here. He wanted me to pray for you, so come and stand here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we honor your holy name. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would cause you to come into a higher place. So much so that your pace will be faster. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is what I wanted to do. Praise the Lord. So this is what I wanted to do. Look at all of them. And after service today, walk up to each one of them and give them a gift. If you're not prepared for that, Next Sunday, do something like that. Yeah. Look at all of them. Master their face. Yeah. A gift can be a very bright new pair of shoes. Their sizes are 40, 40, 44, 3, 45, 42, 46, 43, 45. Their shirt sizes are small, small, medium, big. Who is extra large? Extra large. Yeah. And they also have bank accounts. They accept Naira's dollars and pounds. Or you don't? You do. Exactly. What? You, you won't accept PayPal. Uh, he accepts PayPal. I don't even accept PayPal. This guy is advanced. Praise the Lord. He even accepts PayPal. Wow. You're a ministry. Praise God. <laughs> You're a ministry. Praise the Lord. So someone says, why do you do that? Let me tell you something. It's important that the people that minister to you God's word, you should support them. Yeah. Like many of you now sent me gifts during my birthday. I'm, a, I'm so, I don't feel entitled. I feel grateful. Let me tell you what it means to me. You're appreciative of the sacrifice and the service. You can be like, boy, get this as a pastor. But yeah, true. If your parents are rich and you give them a gift, why don't you say they are rich and give them a gift? Because their wealth and your gift means different things. Is that not true? Exactly. Just a heart of appreciation. So, it's good. And never put many... You know, unfortunately, the way church members think and pastors think are very different. A lot of people think that the pastors are very, very rich. Some pastors are very, very rich. Some people think all the church money goes to the pastor. Not in a great... Not in a proper church. In a proper church, no reasonable pastor would do that. In a proper church, let me tell you how your pastor is being paid. In the cab our own. The church has a board of trustees. The same way companies have board of directors, the church has board of trustees. The remuneration of the church is set by the board of trustees for the pastor. So you cannot just, like today now, I don't even know any account. I don't sign anything. I have no clue of our finances. Because we have about three or four people that do that. We have four full-time accountants. So there's no way I'll be... And also, it also preserves and prevents the pastor from every problem. So if someone moved the finance, I just said, that's the guy you should arrest. Catch him. <laughs> yeah. You don't understand. I don't have any, I literally don't have any login details to any of our church accounts. So if I, if I need to know something, I have to ask somebody else. Praise the Lord. And you know, the reason I'm saying so that themselves and they, of course, another time I come from the singers, all these guys could have been playing for Whiskey, Davido, all of those people. And you keep saying that they are going to the world. Because I was hearing recently that Tiwa Savage said from the church. Is that not true? Someone was saying to me, I don't know, someone was saying that to me. But the reason why they end up singing secular songs is because of money. That's all it is. There's no starting switch about it, just money. Only that the challenge that when you're not singing songs, there are other things that come with it that now complicate your spirituality. So let's be of a blessing to her. Just imagine if, if we choose, if just 
300 of us just choose to bless them, just 300. Or two, just 100, just choose to bless them individually. They will play better next week Sunday. <laughs> Is that not true? Yes, sir. They will play better. Eh? Praise God. Thank you. All right. Let's jump because I want to teach you for 10 minutes. Remember, I said this is a we're going to have an application what session. So, all of you have done your assignment. There's a group that did the assignment so well. <laughs> Look at how they did the assignments. This group is on the next level. Look at it. Matters of the heart, role of excellence. They wrote the questions. They now wrote each person's attachment style, each person's picture, video. All of you online, I hope you feel jealous. Okay, please hold it so that when the time comes, I can thank you. Praise God. Then another thing I want to is that um, I'm hoping I can get a hundred of you that can lead small groups. And the reason why is that, I'll tell you why. Not because I want to lead small groups. The truth is that I love to be very honest. Very honest. When I walk with someone in a meeting like this, is this enough for transformation? No. This starts transformation. Another element of transportation is accountability. And unfortunately, everybody online always tells me, can I talk to you, can I talk to you? But how many people can I talk to? You don't understand, when I do next step in the morning, I'm done. You know, then I have office work, then I have a family, I have church work, I have other churches that report to me. So what I'm trying to do is that, and the good thing about if you are the one leading is that, because they're your friends, they can tell you the truth. Even though they think I'm very accepting, people are always still afraid of telling the truth because I'm a pastor. But because they think that you're a cool person, they can tell you, I want to have these groups both online and what? On site. So I don't know what to do. We will train you. We will train you. So you just need to have, and all of it at this small group already, Good. So we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're planning for your training, but we need more people. We need maybe by 50 to 100. Because the demand is a lot. I'm telling you, the demand is a lot on me. A lot of people want to see me every time. I was checking. I'm sure I have nothing less than 5,000 people on some list to see me. Praise the Lord. You know, and 5,000 of 30 minutes each. That's enough for two or three years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you want to do that after the service, you know, I'm going to ask you to wait maybe on my right-hand side, which is over here, which is your own left-hand side. We'll get your names and uh, we'll do a better job with it. All right. So um, this, our teaching on relationship, frustration, and exhaustion, um, how many of you have noticed a lot of changes in your own life personally? How many have noticed changes? I want to, I want to give the microphone. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. Because, yeah, I've never noticed changes. Yeah. What change have you noticed? Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, the first, okay, I didn't used to attend for service before, but the first one I attended and was when we had to create the group and I just went back and I was talking to my team members. I'm the team lead for my group. And Good. I, I was talking to them that I realized that I didn't know I had fear. Like, most of the people around me, I just, actually guys, I turned them to my friends. So most of the guys around me. So my friends were like, basically when you suppose they date, you they don't to friend. Like, in the, like, I realized that I was cutting, I was trying to cut them, even if you had anything. If I so what were, you had, what were you afraid of? I don't, probably, I don't know, really, I realized that I was probably scared of being loved enough or being enough. I told God a few years ago that I wanted to be the woman, I wanted to be a wife that I would have heard what my husband would tell me before he tells me. What does that mean? <laughs> okay, let me explain. Okay, like spiritually now, before my husband would come and tell me that the Lord said, I want to have heard the Lord said. Okay. So in the place of... So why, 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 why is that important to you? It's, um, I grew up in, I had a spiritual foundation where 
It is very important for you to hear and see. No, no, I agree. But why is it important that you hear before your husband? I don't know. Probably because I, I've, I've seen scenarios. I've seen scenarios where um, a lot of persons just follow the fact that my husband said and they just go ahead and all of those things. And I don't know. It's very important for me to hear myself. Okay. Um, um, I need to hear the Lord say. But it's okay if you hear that your husband follows you. No. He doesn't just have to follow me. No, no, but it's okay. That's okay for it's, you it's, also. It's, okay. it's fine. Okay, that's it's fine. Good. But I do not just want to stay on that surface where mm. it just comes and say the Lord said. Mm. And I have no idea about yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, I every time I think about it, I'm like, no, I don't want to be in that situation. Oh, wow. So I tell myself. <laughs> I don't know if you can see what I'm saying. What can you see? Give this lady. She said she can see some. What can you see? Give, give the lady. Give the lady. Tafa, tafa. What can you see? Yeah. Take. What can you see? I want to know if you have a cancerous spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. What can you see? You like drama? Or just say what you can see. What can you see? You are seeing me and you together. <laughs> no, I don't understand. What can you see in what you were saying? Whatever you are seeing, I'm seeing. Wow. Are you dating? No. No. Why, did, why are you not dating? <laughs> Microphone. Microphone. Microphone, yeah. Why not? When was the last relationship? 2021. 2021. Were you vulnerable in that relationship? Yes, I was. What? Yes, I was. So why, why did they break? I guess he didn't appreciate you. He didn't appreciate you enough? Yes. Okay. What did you learn? To always love yourself first. To always love yourself first. Great lessons. So you didn't love yourself first in that relationship? Yes, I didn't. You didn't? Wow. And when he says he sees something, you say the same thing you're saying. The reason why I said so is this. You know, behaviors don't happen in a relationship. They happen everywhere. So whatever she's done right now, she will have done in the relationship. So I was trying to understand what it is. So maybe she's the kind of person that, number one, she finds out to express herself. Do you find it how to do that? Use a microphone. Yes, I do. You do. So because I just saw it just now. So when that guy was not treating you well, did you explain to him that wasn't you, or you fought him, or you kept quiet? Quiet. Yeah. Then you yeah. start fighting. Yes. You see the problem. This is what people do when they communicate. The first communication is quietness. Then they move to what? Because fighting. The reason why is that by the time they're already quiet, they're already angry. <laughs> so they start talking when they are very angry. They don't know how to talk in a very progressive way. One of the communications you must learn is um, I hope I, during the relationship series this year, we'll focus on exactly how to talk. There's a difference between complaining and talking. When you complain, you always say things like, you did, you did. Because you make the person the culprit that you did this to me, you did this to me, you did this to me. You, you, make, him, you make him feel responsible for her, your pain. But that's really complaining. Communication is, I feel this way. Because you're aware that the person might have not done that with that intention, but that's exactly how I feel. And once you say, I feel this way, you are inviting the person to a conversation. Not that you're fighting the person. You know. So what are you going to do to improve your communication? So why don't you always say your mind? Tell me, what happened? Use the microphone. You said your mind one time and you got punished for it. You said your mind one time and you got punished for it. Tell me. No, I asked you a question. Did you say your mind one time and you got punished for it? Yes or no? Yes. Use a microphone. Yes. What? Yes. Yes. So what did that mean to you? Every time I say my mind, I'll be punished. Whenever I say my mind... It has bad consequences. Yes, yeah, something like that. So question. Is it whatever you say your mind, it has bad consequences? So the solution for that is to stop talking, right? Yeah, I was 
because at the point that I wasn't even like, I felt like it wasn't necessary for me to express Yeah, because whenever I say my mind, I'll get bad consequences. I'll get consequences. I should stop talking. Okay. So when you stop talking, what eventually happens? I hate myself. Then later, what happens again? Then you say your mind. Eventually. Yes or no? Yes, at the point. Yes. And you say it in a worse way. Yes. Uh-huh. Because the solution is not keeping quiet. The solution is, so you used to talk and get bad consequences. So you move to another extreme, I will never talk again. The solution is that, how do I talk and get good, good returns? So you need to learn how to talk and get good returns. Yeah. So how do you talk and get good returns? So for example, I gave you the microphone. Pastor Malaji, when he was speaking, this is what I felt. You know, it, mean, it could mean something, it may not mean something, but this is what I felt. You've just been very open with it. You know, and you must know that when you talk, you don't have to be right all the time because you're also seeing from your own perspective. Praise God. What, did you learn something? Yeah. Yes, back to the lady in black. Let me tell you what I noticed. So I, I noticed you like control. Huh? Yes, I do. You do? Yes. Okay, good. Good. So why do you like control? Okay, I don't know, but I've, I've, always, I've always had this leadership skill. Okay, hold on. Are you the first daughter? No. You're not the first daughter? No. Did you I'm grow the up with fourth out of five. Four out of five. I, I, did you grow up with your single parents? No. You didn't grow up with your single parents? No. So, so what, what? Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Um, I'm the boy of the house. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so we're all girls. Okay. So, but I do the ad stuff. Like, okay. To repair the gen, to wash the car. So I'm the masculine feature of the house. Yeah. So I've always had to stand up and do. Okay. The reason why is that you will always notice it came from somewhere. So don't say you're the boy of the house. Just say this way. It's a nicer way. I develop my masculinity. The reason why is that I've told you every human being has both masculine and what? Feminine. Yeah. Even sometimes when you see people that struggle with their sexuality, it's actually a function of what? The development of the masculinity and femininity. So what happened to you is that maybe because of how you were raised or something, I don't know what happened, you found yourself developing what's more of your masculinity. What that does to you is that if you say, I don't masculinity, then you can also take responsibility or developing what's your femininity. Yeah, that's what you can actually take responsibility and develop it. You can choose to do that if that's what you want to do. If you want to do that, I respect it. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So, 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 so I understand why you're controlling now because sometimes the masculine personality has the tendency to always control and dominate, you know, that kind of thing. But you need to ask yourself, do you want to marry another man? <laughs> the reason why is that if you're very masculine, let me tell you something, if you're very masculine as a woman, you are either going to attract a guy that's very feminine. And that's why many of you that are very driven guys, women here, you keep attracting men that are very, very soft, and you wonder, why don't they get up? Why don't they get up? You know, and the reason why is that the person you are, that's the kind of person you attract. Because if you attract another man that is strong his masculinity, people will clash. It will be clash of the titans. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? Exactly. So, so some of you wonder, why am I attracting this kind of person? So, you know, you know, and the reason why you're attracting is just that way. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get into the word of God, please, so that we can, we can, we can go ahead quickly. So what we're going to do is that I think we'll confirm next week, 30th of April, we're going to have the special breakthrough service in which it will be in the evening and it's going to be about three or four hours and it will be nights of worship and all of those things. And it's going to be like, um, I think it should be majorly ladies alone. I think it's a ladies alone event, but our team is trying to think through it. You know, I think when we do that, it's, it's better. And we can get a bigger venue and we don't have to rush and all of those things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Next month, we will start talking about fear. We'll start talking about dealing with fear because if, if you saw the flyer, they went ahead of me. But next month, talk about fear. But it's not even relationship fear, fear in anything. You know, from business fears, any kind of fear at all. Fear in anything. So we're going to move that way. All right. So let's go ahead. Talk John verse 2. Please, because today, please, today we're going to all walk together. Today I want to say it, we're going to all walk together. So I need all the responses. I want us to be faster. I'm going to ask you questions because we've talked a lot for the past seven weeks. So today's the application. So I've said to you, this starts a lot of things. Start John verse 2. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. It says that, Beloved friends, I pray that you are prospering in every way and you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. You know, it says that. And I'm going to also read 
1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. So the question is this. Um, one of the things you have to really do for yourself is to know if I'm having a bad emotional trigger, where does it come from? If I feel frustrated, where does it come from? For example, um, for me, let, me, let me use this for myself. One of the bad emotional places I used to stay, and I, like I said last week, everybody has an emotional home, yes or no? And what happens home to your house? You eventually go back to your house and leave me, right? Everybody finds a place they always go back to. It's an emotional home. So do you know your emotional home? An emotional home will be an emotion you express almost every day. It, it will come out of you every day. Give me an example of an emotional state, an emotional home. You, happiness an emotional home for you? That's great. Okay, who else? Who? What? What? Loneliness is an, happy, is an emotional home for you. Mm. What? Peacefulness is an emotional home for you. Yeah? Gratitude is an emotional home. So that means every day, a couple of times a day, you do it. Who here is anger an emotional home for you? Wow, that's great. Can I talk to you? T tell me. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. The lady, yeah. There's a lady. You keep going. Yeah. It's an emotional home for you. You get angry. You go, keep going. Keep going. You see her. Yeah. Yeah, over here. You've passed that. Yeah. Give her the microphone. No, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give her the microphone. Yeah, take it. So tell me, you, you, get ang you get angry often? You get angry often? Yes, sir. So why, why do you get angry often? Um, I think that's due to the job I do. The job you used to do? Yeah. Okay. So you, every day you find yourself getting angry? Yes, sir. Yes. So, your parents, we get angry a lot. None. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Praise God. I've told you, focus on what is what? Available, not what is missing. At least I got to have two minutes of break so that I could take my thoughts. I enjoyed it. Exactly. Yeah, my sister, how are you? Yeah, tell me. So who gets angry a lot? Is that a mom? None. None? Yes, sir. So it, it's your job that gives you that? Okay. okay. I wasn't like that before. Okay. I think it started when I took up the current role. I'm You're on? On now. Okay. So okay. Um, my type of person, I don't like when I talk too much. I love my space. I love when I'm alone. But the current job I'm into now, I tend to talk to a lot of people, so I get tired when I have to talk too much. So when you get tired, you get angry? Yes, sir. Okay. So w w your mom, when you, when you get tired, you get angry also? No, my mom is late. Is late? Okay. Yes, sir. What about your dad? My dad is late. Is late also? No, no, no. My okay, dad so, is fine. Okay. But who brought you up? My dad. Your dad. Okay. Yeah. So when, when you, you know, did you have an aunt that also brought you up with your dad or a stepmom? No. Nobody, okay. Yes. So, so you, your dad, when he's very ang when he's tired and you talk to him, does he snap also? No, he rather not say anything. He will not say anything? Yeah. And when he needs to say something, will he say something you just snap and say, leave me alone? No, he won't say anything. He won't say anything. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's great. So it's amazing. So, so, so you know, she, an emotional state, fantastic. The reason why I'm saying so is that emotional state can be both positive and what? Negative. One negative emotional state I saw was that I just always felt disrespected. For some people in my life. And there are people like that. When you listen to them, they often say, why are you disrespecting me? They're very, you know, like, they use it very often. They're being rude. And the reason why is that because that's emotional state, they find a way of interpreting everything from that emotional state. They find a way of coming back there. For example, now, as they took the light, you are not preaching, no, you are very upset. <laughs> you are not the one preaching. I'm the pastor. I knew why they took the light. This is a rented facility. We are fixing our church. And they explained to me that they cannot leave the light on when, there's when Nepa comes. So they take out the light and change over. When they did that, I couldn't stop them. So, if you notice, the microphone keeps working. So, we bought a UPS. Because I focus on what is available, not what is missing. 
Praise God. You want to say something? Okay, give her the microphone. Good afternoon, sir. Please, if you have the questions that we need to discuss, let me put on the screen so that everybody can start. Those that need the assignment can start looking at it. Yeah, good afternoon. So when you asked um, what our emotional home was... Yes, and it can be a lot of variety of emotions. Yeah, thank you. I realized that one of mine was anger as well. Anger. Oh, wow, that's good. And while you were asking her questions, yeah. I was answering You were question. answering. So who, who has anger, your dad or mom, or both of them? My dad. Your dad. So yeah. growing up, he, he always knew how to express himself when he was very angry. Like he would flog us, you know, do all those things. But he also had a very kind side. But I never really traced it to him until you start asking her questions. And I realized that there are nine of us. And about four of us have the same, you know, um, problem. Yeah, of like anger. They're really angry. So when you have family meeting, the four of you cause trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we then don't. the other ones look like your mom, right? Have you noticed also? Yes, my mom is. The reason really why is that most of us takes behavior from our primary caregiver. The reason why is that as a child, you are absorbing your environment. The way you understand human behavior is your, I never say your parents, is what your primary caregiver. So I'm just showing you where that comes from. Yeah, tell, tell, yeah, yeah you were describing it. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, so I noticed that at least. Um, at least at every point in every day, something gets me really upset. Yeah. And then when I react, after some time, I'll be like, wow, I shouldn't have reacted like that. Good. I Good. overreacted. That was Wonderful. necessary. You, you are at the level of what I call self-awareness. You, you know something is, is not right. But the second thing you have to now do is, is self-discovery, is to discover more. And ask yourself, why do I do this? The reason why you do that is because your anger is your natural response to those things. To now say, I want to create another response. For example, let me give you some example. Men that promiscuous, not even men that promiscuous. So men just walk around, people just look at girls' buttocks. It just comes to them naturally. Either they're in charge or not. After the, don't just pass on the aisle in charge. You know, it's their natural response. And I keep laughing because I'm like, I don't see what they look at. So they, some guys say, ah. Pastor Isaiah doesn't see what they look at. The reason why is that it's your natural response. Because I don't know what difference that makes in any equation of things. Just natural response. And natural, it's just the way you've trained your mind over time. So what you need to now say is that if I don't want to get angry, what can I do next? So I used to feel disrespected and this is how I change it. Because when people do something to me, I'm like, it's not actually disrespecting me. And I'm going to say that, No. He's defending himself because he feels, he feels as if he's not doing a great job. So it will make me have more pity for them than anger. So because I see, I see the person feel weak already, not defending himself. But I feel as if he's disrespecting me. So for example, you hear women say, you're not answering me, you're not answering me. But meanwhile, the person that's not answering you already feels stupid, feels confused, doesn't know what to say, and keeps quiet to, to cop their stupidity and their shame. But you are getting angry, they're not answering you because you feel as if they are not answering you is what is disrespect. So if you want to change your anger, that's something you have to change. Is that okay? Yes, sir. That's the same way I became a generous person. I didn't grow up from a generous background. But let me tell you one of the big reasons why I give. One of the big reasons why I give is that when I give, it puts me, I'm superior in my mind. I'm, I'm a lot. When you can be a giver and be a hustler in your mind at the same time, when you're a king, you assume the identity of a king when you give. Praise God. All right. So let, let's, let's just go so that we, we don't stay there too much. So I'm, I, we're trying to see where all of these things come from. So I want to read First Samuel chapter 17 to you. The Bible says this. Yeah. First Samuel chapter 17.
Yeah. Verse 10. The Bible says, And the Philistine referring to Goliath said, I defile the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard this, the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and they were greatly afraid. So the question is this. Watch what I'm saying. How come Saul and Israel heard these things and they were afraid? But when David heard it, he had a different approach. I will tell you the review. I want to show you in that verse the difference. You remember that they both listened to Goliath. And they were afraid. And David had what, a different what, approach. Because look at the next verse now. Ne- the next verse. And David, the son of Ephraim of the Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, had three sons. I'm going to jump. And long and short, you know, um, long and short, David had gone that day to go and see his brothers. But for his brothers, see what the Bible says happens to them. I, I want to see what the Bible says happened to them. Um, yes. Yes. Mm. Yes, verse 16. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 16. Let's read together. I want to go. And the Philistine Jew... Take note. The Philistine Jew what? Morning and what? And presented himself for what? So the Bible says what Goliath did was this. Goliath was very intelligent. He came every day in the morning and evening and made them afraid. He was giving them things to meditate upon. He was giving them materials for meditation. That's why they became all afraid. So, in the morning, he would just come and terrorize them. Then in the evening, he would just come before they sleep and terrorize them. That was why, ultimately, their inner image got what? Defeated. Because they were listening to Goliath, what? Morning and what? Evening. But David was busy meditating the book of the law morning and what evening so as soon as david heard what goliath said the what he was meditating upon responded from the inside the question is this if you're going to change your state and change your emotion you're going to ask yourself what do i it's not what i do on sundays what do i meditate upon morning and evening and that's why I'm asking this question. The reason, that's why I also ask for the small group leaders. The reason why is that this will start a process for you. you know, it's, just, it's like weight loss. To lose weight is easy. It's to keep like that that is difficult. Because it's now a total lifestyle change. And you need some kind of accountability. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, you know, it's just important for you to ask yourself, what do I meditate? So when it comes to relationship, how do I, I never say, what do you think? What do you meditate on in the morning and in the evening? What is speaking to you? Are you listening to Goliath speaking to you? Because some of you don't know. When the girls in your office gather together, what do they talk about? How unfaithful men are, how terrible men are, how wicked men are. And they keep feeding your heart and keep feeding your heart and your heart becomes more heavy and become very heavy and become very heavy. The difference between David and his brothers was simple. It was because for 40 days, imagine for 40 days, Goliath will abuse them in the morning, abuse them in the evening. There's no way they will not be defeated because their personal image was crushed. All right, so let's go. So the question now is that how do we change our state? How do we really change our state? So you, you need to, so we need to really change it right now. Let, we're going to go to the question. So let's read the questions again. Yep. Yeah. Let's do the questions. I know that you wrote 13 questions, but I want to focus on about five of them. Yeah. So this group is ready. Give them the microphone. Because this is a, this, today is a day of practicals. So as I ask them, you can begin to work on yourself also. Yeah. What are the questions you have? Let me see. Um, okay. So what are three things you are most grateful for? Okay. Um, what is the pain you associate with marriage, men, and relationships? Okay. That's what I want to start from. That's the first question for me. What's the pain you really associate? Give me the answers. Yeah. So Tolu says terrible communication. Terrible communication. Okay. Um, I don't know what that means. You know, that I really don't understand. She, I, maybe she needs to explain what that means. Okay. Give me someone that's on your role so that you can just pass the microphone to the okay. person. Tari says losing the one she loves to death. Losing the who, who said that? Tari, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. So this is what you associate with relationship marriage. Losing the one you, want, you love to death. 
Why, why do you say that? I'm just scared of losing the one to death or to someone else. What? I'm just scared of losing the one I love to death or someone else. Why? 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 Um, I grew up without my dad. Um, he left us when I was three. And um, I was actually going to get married to my father's daughter, but he left. We're going to, to get married to? To my daughter's father, sorry. And um, he left too. So I'm used to people leaving. Okay. So I decided to just, um, I'm, that's, that's what I'm scared of. But I'm not scared of loving. I'm just scared that someone is going to they will leave me when I love. Okay, so when your father left, that means men will leave you. I mean, that's been the cycle. That's been a cycle? Yes, sir. That's great. So two things are a cycle for you. I'm just wondering, so two things are a cycle for you. Is two things enough to become a cycle? Let's be honest. What? Two things. Is it enough to become a cycle? No, no, sir. Why have you made this cycle for yourself? So your father left when you were young, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So why did your father leave? Have you asked him or you don't know where he is again? My father is late now. He's late? Yes, sir. But he left and died later or he died and that way he left? He died 10 years ago. What? He died 10 years ago. Did he die when he left or it, it was the death? He left when I was three years and I would be 30 this year. I, I'll be 30 this year. Yes, sir. So the reason why I'm saying so is this. The way your mind is working is almost as if your past it to your future. That's a terrible life. That's the way your mind is working, that your past it to your future. And the truth is that your future does not equal to your past. Your past, see, the only time your past is equal to your future is when you live in the past, which is what you're doing right now. So your past will equal to your future when you choose to live in the past, which is exactly what you're doing right now. So the question is this. Instead of you being afraid that someone will leave you, see what is happening to you. You're focusing on what you don't want. You're afraid that someone will leave you. What should you focus on? Here's the microphone. What do you think you should focus on? Pastor V. difficult because um, I'm in the category that I already had my mind made up that marriage is not for me and I'm okay with one child so you what but I'm in the category of people that says marriage is not for me and I'm okay with one child like I've made up my mind so to me I really have nothing I should focus on show me your marriage finger why do you have a ring oh, it's a fancy ring it's a fancy ring <laughs> I instead to put it on nowhere other place on a place that shows you're married. But in your mind, you also want to marry somewhere, right? Yeah, I want to be loved. So, so you see what I mean by misassociation right now? A part of her is sabotaging herself. And a part of her... So you find that... So the reason I'm saying so is that if you do not fix it, for a long time you'll be stuck. Because it will be three steps forward, two steps backwards. Three steps forward to the backwards. Three step forward, to the backward. So what do you have to change? Instead of saying that I don't want someone to leave me, I think your focus should be, I want to be in a relationship that will stay together forever. Is that possible for you? It's possible for me, but I think I keep meeting users. You keep, you keep what? Attracting users. Users. So why do you think you keep attracting users? You made a point the other time. You said when um, you are a strong person, you attract the feminine man, and that's just what I've been. Attracted. You think what? I said you made a point the other time. You said when you are a strong woman, you attract a feminine man. Yeah. And that's just the kind of people I've been. Attracted. No, but some feminine men are great people. Uh, yeah, but they always want to cut into my um, account. No, 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 no. I don't want to generalize that of feminine. It's not like I saying that all masculine ladies are very domineering. Is that right? No. no, you cannot generalize that way. But that's what I've seen so far. Yeah. So, but the question I'm going to ask you is that why are you using that to judge everything? Pastor B, I'm not. I mean, that's but that's what you're doing just now. Happening repeatedly. What? That's the same thing that has been happening repeatedly. What do you think is about them, not about you? That I'm, I'm so much of a giver. Yeah. <laughs> See, I want to notice a pattern. Once it comes to relationship, all of us think the problem is about the what? The other person, and we are the perfect person. If I talk to them, you'll be surprised what they'll say about you. 
And I keep on asking you, what do you have to learn? Let me tell you what I think is about you. Because with all the men you've met, you are the common denominator. I don't know where that yes came from, though. <laughs> the reason why is that, the reason why is that, if I were you, this I would think about it. Well, I met Jimmy, I met Funke, I met Funto, I met all these guys, and I'm the common person. Maybe there's something about me that I need to work on. You've noticed one of it, which is the fact that you're masculine. So they've noticed what it is. Maybe there are other things you need to notice that will change that. But the other thing is that, the moment you say that you're going to attract people like that, you attract people like that. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are you going to do? I need to, I need to let go of the idea that... Um, I think you need to... I think you need to really make up your mind you want this. I don't think you'd want it yet. True or False. Not so-so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all I need. That, the reason why is that once it's not so-so, it will not happen so-so. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back. The same question. So, Dami says the pain associated with relationships is maltreatment and abandonment. Okay, Dami. Where's Dami? All oh, right, <laughs> maltreated and abandonment. Okay, that means so. Yeah, so ev- what you know, every time you think about relationship, you think of maltreatment and what abandonment. Okay, so is that what you want? No, so why do you associate with it with that? Because in my relationship, that's what I've experienced. All of your relationships, not all. So, how many of your relationships have you experienced this? Two. Two. How many you want? Didn't you experience this? How many? Didn't you experience this? One. What? One. One. In second school, you didn't have a boyfriend? Mm, no. University, you didn't have a boyfriend? I did. You did? Did he abandon you also? I'm not treat you. No. Did you add him to this one? <laughs> no. So that's two in. No, that's, that's the one that didn't maltreat you. That's what they wanted to maltreat yeah. you. Okay, so they don't want to maltreat you. Okay, good. So. If it's two versus one, how can you say that you're gonna, everything's going to maltreat you? Hmm. So why did they maltreat you? Have you asked them why? No. Do they know they're maltreating you? I, I, I didn't ask. You didn't ask? No. Do you tell them they're maltreating you? Yeah, I bring it up. You said so. Yeah. What did they say when they, they say maltreating like you? They will always... What? I say, I don't like the way you're treating me. Yeah. It's not nice. They will always reassure you, but still go back to the I will never say that to a man. I will not say, I don't like the way you're treating me. It's not nice because I'm forced on negative. I will say, I want you to treat me this way. Mm. <laughs> the reason why is that your assumption is that you know the way, you know, they know the way they should treat you. We all came up from different backgrounds. Where I came from, they don't open door for woman. <laughs> but I could be married or date someone that that's very important to what? To her. For example, now a lot of you got did engagements and what did someone else and propose to you? I didn't know I proposed to my wife. I just asked her, "Will you marry me?" And she said yes. That was about maybe, you know, because when we got born again, there's no real dating. It's like when you want to when you want to date someone, you like you want to marry the person. So it's from that dating you ask straight. All of them is only one question. <laughs> that was how born again used to do that time. Not another that there. You were dating for fun. How can you be dating for fun? Ah, don't you know Kingsway? <laughs> so it was only one question. But if you ask my wife, it's not as if she misses the fact that I didn't know there was something because it might have not been important to her at that time, or maybe it's important to her and all of those things. But you know, there might be someone else that that's important to her for you to do a garden wedding, travel to Mauritius, or go somewhere else and go and do something really romantic and all of those things. But the thing is that they need to verbalize. 
Stop saying what you don't like alone. Say what you like. So how did you want them to treat you? So like from this, I've just realized that I've actually not itemized how I want to be treated. Do you even know how you want to be That's treated? That's what I'm saying. That I've she, you see the, she herself, she doesn't even know she, See, she knows what she does not want, but she doesn't know what she wants. How many of you are in this boat? The reason why is that remember that the person you want to, you are married to or the person you are dating doesn't know you exactly and they 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 would know just the things that you say glory to god okay is there another group that is ready no group is ready group leaders where are you one What? Your group one, right? Wow. Okay, let's do the third, third question. So, so let me say something to you. So first of all, everybody, can you tell me the pain you associate with relationship and marriage? And the reason why is this. You know why? There are two things that drive human behavior, pain and pleasure. So, you're always trained to avoid pain. You're always trained to gravitate towards pleasure. So this is what I'm saying to you. Once, this is very powerful. Once you associate pain with relationship, with marriage, with men, with women, gradually you will find yourself being pulled away. You'll find yourself being pulled away. You'll find yourself being pulled away. And the reason why is that you've associated what pain with it. For example, how many of you use this drug called chloroquine? Did you use it? How many of you found yourself staying away from chloroquine? You know, and the reason is simple because we just associated a lot of pain with chloroquine. So whatever you're straight pain with, you will find yourself going, and that's why we need to change it because it's something you really want, but you find it very painful. So subconsciously, you find yourself pulling the weight from it. You find yourself what? Pulling the weight from it. You find yourself what? Pulling the weight from it. So how do we stop it? You must be able to see guys and be like, oh wow, they're so lovely beings. Oh wow, they're so lovely. Oh, did you see what I mean? They're just a... Yeah, you want to see ladies and say, Oh, they're so wonderful, they're so wonderful because of exactly how you feel. Praise God. Okay, so the first question is that what pain do you associate? Take the microphone, let's ask somebody else. Any other person, just raise up your hands and let's ask. Please, let's make it fast. I don't want to. Will you come to this lady that has the native, native on? Um. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. So, my group, we, some of them responded to the questions. And this is from Iro. She said... Is Iro close to you? Because I need to understand some more questions if I need to. Is she close to you on that role? No. Okay, the reason why that... If, if I need to ask more, she don't need to answer my question. So, that's my challenge. Okay. Can I answer for yourself? Yes. Okay. So... Okay, I personally associate the pains of being cheated on. I find it very difficult to trust anybody. And even before the relationship starts, and you just say, I love you. And I say, oh, that guy is lying. That's good. I mean, that's what, so why do you think guy is lying? Yeah, because I feel like when you say, I love you, yeah. you should mean it. I can't say, I love you to somebody when I don't mean it. So why do you think it doesn't mean it? Because the, according to, like, it's been a series, so I've been, my eyes have been opening to some things. <laughs> so, what, what I can say is, um, when I was in a relationship with a particular person, he... He would cheat and he would come back and say, oh, I'm sorry. And he would say, I love you. Do you understand? And I will be like, oh, okay. He loves me. Question. So, okay. Can someone cheat and love you? Yes. 
Okay. Take home, take home question. Take home question. Yeah. So it made me. Hold on, hold on. Do you love God? Yes. Do you cheat on Him? <laughs> yes. Oh, you cheat on God. Hold on, hold on. Many of you here, you love God. Don't stay with your boyfriend, it's an issue. And yet, you love God. So, why do you cheat on God? That condition makes you a fish bend. Continue, please. Okay, so, like I said, I. I don't believe anything. So, so let, let me say that because a lot of people are also online and this goes viral sometimes. You know, standard. In a very standard way, it's difficult to love someone and cheat on them. But to truth in the reality is that sometimes there are conditions where you love someone and you cheat and it's not because you don't love them but because there are some things because you're thinking that cheating has to do with the two of you. And that's why some people take it personal on themselves but it has to do with the person's soul. Sometimes someone is just indiscipline. Just terribly indiscipline. Sometimes just the way they were raised. But not just raised like loosely. Sometimes best not just a great believer. So it's a lot of things. Sometimes someone is an emotional gap and is looking for some kind of release. Cheating can be the sign that you don't love someone. But I'm not sure that if you love someone um, that if you cheat, that means you don't love someone. It's, it's, it's quite different. It's quite complicated. They all fit into each other. So back to you, my sister. So you said that... Yeah, back to you. So you said that um, it would say this. Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. No more room discussion. Praise the Lord. Once you talk, I give the microphone. All right. So back to you, my... So you are always afraid that someone is going to cheat on you, right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. So, and I'm just like, mm, let me just be looking at this one. At the end of the day, he will just like repeat what other people. So I'm always like going with the flow till I feel like there is always an end. Okay. So if you keep doing that to yourself, what will happen? I will lose out on companionship and friendship. and Because of a fear of, that you have, right? Yes. So how, what, how are you going to change that? I don't know. So the first thing you have to do is to make sure that, number one, if every time you're dating, you need to date someone that is in line with your value. And date someone that understands that, hey, sexual integrity and honesty is important to me. Yes. And that's it. And the second thing is this. You also need to break the pattern of fear you have, lest you attract that kind of person. You understand what I mean? So all the people that you did it that cheated on you, or maybe this person did it, did you check for sexual integrity before you chose him? No, I just assumed. So, exactly. So, because it was your mistake you assumed. Why didn't you check? Why didn't you ask him and say, and you know the thing, you'd be like, oh, I can cheat with you. If I can cheat with you, I can cheat with other persons. <laughs> okay, like, it's just me and you cheating. Oh, wow. It's all of us cheating. Good? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So, please listen to this. And this will talk to exhaustion. For everybody here that you really want to get married, you're married, you want to make your marriage work, and you don't find the energy, like, I just don't find the energy to change, this is what's going to change you. One thing. What am I missing out of? Who is here and you really want to be in a relationship, you want to get married, but you don't have the energy. Like you are tired. You don't want to do it. Anybody, raise up your hands. I'm going to call you. That's what I'm asking to raise up your hands. You, you want to talk? Yeah. Yeah, that, that lady. There's a lady here. Yeah. 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 What, do you, 
Will you please stand so I can see you all? So tell me. This is the last person I'm going to talk to. Yeah, tell good me. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. I just don't have the energy to date. What energy do you have? What do you have? If a guy is coming my way, once we are in a relationship for more than six months, I get bored. Where are we, where are we headed? Okay. Good. Okay. So tell me, tell me what your expectation. As you guys should be to marry in six months, right? My expectation is like, okay, I have this mindset that's where I came from. Marriage is having the same mindset. We are, we are entering this. We are not coming out. It's a closed door. So have the same mindset. This is where I'm headed. I want to get married. I want to raise a family. This is my dream. This is what I want to achieve. Let's come in and just get started. Stop. Boyfriend, good morning, good morning. It was me. It was me. Okay. Great. I want to ask another question. If you stay too long in that relationship, what begins to happen to you? You get bored. I get bored. Bored of what? I just, I was like, I think you are, you are not serious. You are not just ready. Why do you think you are not serious? I start picking thoughts. What? I start picking thoughts. Like no, I was but, like, but, but the question now, that's what you do. But why do you think the person is not serious? Because, one, you, if you are serious, you will take a step. You will take a step towards marriage. Yeah. What about if he says that I'm trying to know you some more? Six months is a whole lot. What? what? Six months is a whole long time. Six and, months is a month. And you can never get to know someone. The thing is just the mindset. What I look out for is, me, once I'm married, it's the dead door's part. There's no way out. So have that mindset. Let's go in. So what are we looking for? So. Praise God. How many of you can see the danger and the advantage of that, of that mindset? Both the danger and the advantage. I love the mindset that says the dealt to us part, but that's when you're not marrying someone that's an abuser. And the reason why I'm saying so is that I understand someone says, how long should you date for? You need to date until you know you know the person and you have peace about it. Listen to me, but that dating must be progressive. Progressive means that you guys can see you guys are moving towards a destination. So nobody feels like their time is being wasted. The challenge, the challenge is this. Sometimes, sometimes people hide. And I agree that you can date two years and someone can be hiding. But I just think that six months, they can really, really hide. I give an example. There's someone that they were going to get married. They chose the wedding date. And they were working it out just for us to discover that the guy was married, his family was in Canada. And, you know, the guy was just trying to find a place to stay until he goes to join them. Sometimes, those things cannot be done within six months. I agree with you that a lot of people want to waste time. But I think that there should be a balance. So, if you come in six months, because, question, maybe the kind of person you are is that, before you guys date, you guys are already close, so you guys already know each other. Yes, what? Yes. Well, I will call that you've said this in already. So I'm saying that from the time you meet someone and the person doesn't really know you and say, oh, I like you. You know, I say, okay, I like you back. I stayed six months. You know, that might be too short. But also, these things have to do with definitions because maybe in our own definition, we've already been friends for a while and we've stepped up to dating right now. You already know, you already know me anyway on that we're not committed because it's just very different sometimes. Okay, praise the Lord. But that was not the example I was looking for. I was looking for the example of someone that is really exhausted. It's not about dating. I just don't want to marry. I don't want to do this again. Anybody like that? Just raise up your hands, please. Anybody like that? Is there a lady over there? On your right. Praise God. Please stand, stand so I can see you very well. Stand so I can see you very well. Okay, tell me. So you don't want to get married or date, marry or something? What? Yes. Use the microphone. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Why? It's tiring, sincerely. And giving my 
like my family, yeah, my dad, in as much as, oh yeah, I got married to my mom, then after me, we've realized that <laughs> it's not being real, like, we are not just the only family he has. Exactly. You, you see what I was saying just now? Just imagine someone, you know, and most of the time, those things happening. When your dating or courtship is short, you will have more surprises than someone that dated or courted for a longer time. Yeah. I'm not saying if you do for a longer time, you don't get surprises, so your surprise will just be what? Um, Smaller. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. So, because of that, during, like, even if I'm in a relationship, like, I tend to hide away. I just cut off communication, ghost off. Like, yeah, I know that, okay, I've lost a tangible relationship because of that, but then I'll just be like, you know what? Four kids. What? No, 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 no. Lady, 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 hold on. You are. This is very interactive, but you need to mind your language. So sorry. Please apologize to us. I'm so sorry, Church. Yeah. The reason why is that you must never forget that this is a house of God. Yes. So, you know, because you, now you start corrupting us with, your, with corruption. <laughs> yeah, and we want to build faith here and help people. We don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. And even personally, I don't think you should use those words because they're not just good words to use. Okay, please continue. Being in a relationship, if I meet someone now, I'll just be like, okay, act like, even if it's a month in, then I'll just be like, mm, maybe he's not even honest, like, oh, this one is doing, <clears throat> what if he has a family out there, what if he has another, so I just sum that up in my head and I just start. Let me ask you a question. What, will, what, what do you miss because you're not dating? What do I miss? Yeah. Um, Companionship, yeah, there are times I'm lonely, I won't lie, then I'll just be like, you know, maybe I'm better off alone. It's better to No, be no, no, you're not answering my question. You're answering the question you want to answer. What do you miss when you are by yourself and not in a relationship? When I'm by myself. Yeah, what do you miss, yeah. <sighs> what do I miss? I'm not sure I miss anything. Is that what you want to tell yourself? Okay. Companionship, I guess. No, no, no. Don't worry. If you say it means nothing, I don't, I don't agree with you, but that's what you want to tell yourself. That's okay. You've been in love with her before, yes or no? Have I? <laughs> yeah. You have been in love before? Yes. How was it? Okay. That's the one I'm asking for. Tell me. What did you guys go to? What did the guys do? What did you do for him? How did you feel when he texted you? Happy. You felt happy? Yeah. What did your friend say when you spoke about him? They knew that. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> well. Tell me. Like, that's my happy place, and everyone around me knows it. So. Everybody knows. So, when you, were, when you were in love, that was your happy place. Yeah. How did you feel like when you were going to see him? <laughs> excited. Always. You felt excited? Yes. What was one of the biggest things he did for you that made you happy? <sighs> a lot. He's always doing a lot for me. No, I won't lie. So, he was, always was always doing a lot for you. So, tell me one thing he did that made you very happy. He cooks. So, so, so he cooks. Money wise, I won't be out, but he cooks. Like, he, he I cooks. might go to work, I'm tired, and yes. And he will cook. There is Good. always food ready. For a, a, and there's always food ready for you. Yes. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> when you were in love, what did you do to show back your love to him? My presence was enough for him. Your presence. What did you guys go to together? Well, I love the beach. What? So, I love the beach. So, what did you guys go to together? A lot of places. Just, just tell me a place. The you... happy place is the beach for me. Which beach was that? Um, Takwa Bay. You went to Takwa Bay? Yes. Was he holding your hands? 
Was he holding your hands? Yes. What was he wearing? Uh, sorry, this is like a relationship with mom. Yes, ago. It's okay. Yeah. What was he wearing? I, I why? Was he wearing what? White, are you asking? Are you telling me why I'm asking? Or what? White, white. White. Okay. Yes. And the shorts was what color? Same. I guess. White, white. And what were you wearing? <laughs> You're wearing the bikini, right? What? You're wearing the bikini. Not really. Okay. What were you wearing? Shorts. Shorts. Yeah. What did you feel when he was holding you on the beach with that white and you were wearing that shirt? What did you feel? <laughs> Shh, said, listen to me. You need to be patient with me. Like you I can sound very serious. The beach is my happy place. No, no, no. What did you feel? Leave the beach. What did you feel? Happy. What does happy mean? Being at peace. You were at peace? Yes. You could forget the whole world at that exactly. moment. Exactly. The question I want to ask you is that what will you do to have that moment again? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I would really love to have that again. Yeah. But my fear of... Shh, I never asked about your fear. <laughs> what will you be willing to pay to have that moment again? I don't know. Anything, I guess. Did you say anything? Yes. Including that mindset you just stood up and said you have? Did you remember how you guys walked on the Takwa Bay beach after you guys had lunch? And he looked into your eyes and said, I love you with the whole of my heart. And you looked into his eye and said, this is my safe place. <laughs> and having experienced all of that, because of some things that happened, you say you never want to experience that again. Is that what you really mean? Tell me. Yes. Do you mean that you don't want to experience that again or you want to experience that again? I want to experience that. That's what you really want. Yes. You know why I took you down the memory experience? I don't want to unlock your heart. And it's okay if tears are coming down your eyes. It's fine. <laughs> I just because I, I could see that you were bold and you have this facade that I'm meaningless, I'm ruthless, I'm heartless. But I can see beneath you. You've experienced love before. You knew what it felt like. And because of one or two bad experiences, you want to throw it away. But you just tell me, I will give anything to have it. So why are you crying? Tell me why you're crying. Because your heart is telling you that's exactly what you love, but you've been fighting it for years. Is that not true? Yeah. But you just said you'll give up everything for it. Strong people confront their pain. Weak people run away from it. And because of culture, you think that people that are running from their pain are stronger. Not knowing that people that confront their pain are stronger. You know what I think? I think you want love so bad. But you're running away from your hurt so bad that you don't even know what you want again. Am I right? Huh? Yes. So what do you really want? I want to be someone's favorite person again. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? This is a friend. Where's she? Where's she? Yeah. Come, 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 come. <laughs> come. Come over here.
Come over here. It's okay. What's your name? Ademi. Yeah. Ademi. Look at me. It was really bad, but the past does not equal to the future, except you live in it. You're not exhausted. You've just focused on so much pain that tiring. A few minutes ago, you just told me that I'm exhausted. I, don't, I never want to date again. I never want to get married again. But you know you were lying, right? Yes. Huh? <laughs> yes. You were lying, right? That's what you wanted to tell yourself to feel yourself, make yourself feel good. Yes, sir. What do you really want? Favorite. To be someone's favorite. What will you focus on? To be someone's favorite or to never to get married again? What will you focus on? To be someone's favorite person. Exactly. That's what you favor, fo focus on. To be someone's favorite person. You're talking about depression. Tell me about the depression, yeah? I'm really being in a very bad place that I even have it on the notes on my phone like I was going to hand things we're going to commit suicide yes exactly because things got really bad and I've been hearing a lot about you about NLP and okay it's like when a client of mine usually sends it so that day I was just like wait why is she always sending this thing to me and from there then wine press i joined like the second day of wine press and you literally every time you teach even my friends know like i call you my crush because <laughs> thank you thank you continue yeah so <laughs> don't change the focus let's focus on what is my Focus what, what is available, not what is missing. Is that okay? Yeah. So, during wine press, you kept talking about do not speak negative things because every time things doesn't work out, I'm always like, maybe it's not just for me. Maybe I'm not just the right person. Maybe things are not just working out for my good. But every time I listen to you, always like, I know things are hard. I know things are difficult. We are going through difficult things. Just don't speak negative. Let me ask you a question. Why did you want to commit suicide? The whole being the first child. What? First child. What is wrong with being the first child? The responsibility. What is the responsibility? Family. Do you have to pay for things? A lot. A lot, okay? Yes. Okay. A lot. Even work in as much as I want to ask you, which one do you prefer? So the one that pays for the needs or the, or the one that pay, begs to be paid for? The one that no, I don't want to be begged. The to one that wants to pay for things or, or or the one that is begging, because other people are leaning on you right now, literally begging you right now. Which one do you prefer? The one that pays for the one that begs? The one that pays for what? Pays for. Why are you not grateful for that? It's just. No, you, you know it's tiring because you look at how much you have to do you don't realize that you're privileged I, I want to ask you your siblings that depend on you do you, know, do you know the amount of shame they feel when they have to ask you for money talk to me or you think they don't feel shame I, all I do is just I don't want them to hug so before they do even hug I but, but do you know that sometimes they still have needs beyond what you provide? Yes. And what do they do? They beg. If they can't beg you, they beg other people. And I don't want that. But that is true. You can't stop it. But look at you. You're a young girl here. 
And at a young age, you become so responsible to take care of your family. You're a super girl. You are a hero among ladies. How come you're not seeing how gifted and gracious you are? Tell me, yeah. I just feel every time I keep working, I, it's not enough. You see, the thing is this. Number one, I can't solve everybody's problems. But the second thing that it's a privilege to give. Say it's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. To give. What about if you didn't have? What would happen? Exactly what I used to thank God for every time I'm there. Why not? Exactly. So why not keep thanking God for that? <laughs> that you're even in a place where you can have to help them. Last week there was a lady. By the time she said that story here, I don't know if she's in the service. She said, we stay in uncompleted buildings. Do you stay in an uncompleted building? On the stairs. What is it? Oh, wow. And look at how gracious you look. So it's going to be one story to the other. But the question is that what you focus on determines your reality. So when you say that, you know, you don't want to love and all of those kind of things. You focus on the bad experience. But it was this guy that you were madly in love with. You guys walked on Taqwa Beach together. You guys, you know, no, I, want, I want everybody to see you laughing because they say you're crying. You guys walked on Taqwa Beach together. Let them see your face, yeah. yeah. And you miss it, don't you? Yes. Tell me, use the microphone, don't you? Yes. So how did you me think of, I will never get married again? Because I just don't want to get into it and I knew what my mom went through. You know what your mom went through? Are you your mom? Yes. Are you your mom? No. So why do you think what happens to your mom will happen to you? Because you always think that the past equals the future. That's the challenge. Can't you see that you start a new beginning for the whole family? You're already a provider at a young age. You've experienced love before. You hate to be lonely. So you never grew up with your father? No. Yeah. I, yeah. Can, tell, I can tell that you never grew up with your father. And I can tell because... When you see people that desperately love love, most of the time they never experienced it. And it, when it, so they, they either jump at it, and when it doesn't work, they pull away from it. You have a lot to work on now. You have a beautiful life. God bless you. Thank you. Give me the microphone. Help ever downstairs. Okay. Let's appreciate her. I want to use that to close. I want to use that to close because we've been on this for such a long time. I want you to notice something. When people say, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I don't know what to do, this is how you solve it. The truth is that they are lying to themselves. And how do you help them? You need to help them remember. Because what happens is that there's a place they've locked out. So you need to open it for them. That's why you hear David say things like, I think of the mercies of the Lord. I think of the goodness of the Lord. Because there's a place it opens up in your heart. This, if, you're, if you're feeling frustrated, this is a summary of the teaching. If you can find what it meant for you when you were in love. Yeah, you can find it, right? You give her the microphone. She wants to tell me something. <laughs> tell me. Um, okay. So, my last relationship, we dated for over four years. And I dated someone that was way older than me, that was 12 years older than me. And it was pretty serious. Met my family, was there on like, gosh, he was there for my graduation, he was there for my call to bar, and then just didn't work out. Like, I tried, I did everything, we did everything, and just wasn't working. And, and because of that, you said you would never do that again? Yeah, because every other person that I've met is literally like almost always the same thing. 
They don't want to be vulnerable. Like, they what? They don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to communicate properly. Like men are just, they don't want to talk about stuff. Everybody's just letting their, they don't want to let their guard down. So what is the decision from that? Love is not real. People are not real. I'm just tired of putting in effort. Make everybody just get out. Everybody just get out. It's just get out. Wow. Let everybody just what? Question. Uh, what's your name, please? Tolu. Tolu, but you were in love before, right? Yes, sir. Was it beautiful? Yes, sir. How did you feel? Hmm. On Valentine? On your birthdays? On his birthdays? How did you feel? It was nice, sir. How are your birthdays now? Lonely. Lonely. When you had problems now, who do you talk to? Nobody. Nobody. The question is this, and this is a question. Onto the pain of what you want is bigger than the pain you have experienced. You will not move. And I'm just showing Tolu, Tolu, question, is this... A, so imagine in five years' time, you going through five years and you don't have someone to love. Oh, how would it feel like in five years' time? If it's lonely right now, if it's sad right now, what will happen in five years' time? It's be worse. How worse will this get? How bad will it get, rather? Very bad. Everybody will be married. And how will you feel at that time? Very lonely. Very lonely. Because all your friends you even hang out to will be married by that time, right? And will you have regrets? Yes. Sir. What will your biggest regret be? Your biggest regret will be this. When I had the time to work on this, I didn't work on it. Listen to me and I'm going to close with this. This is my biggest pain. Is that when it's time to help singles, it's always when it's very late. Because what you can do at some ages, very easy. But at some ages, they're very difficult. But at those ages, you tell yourself the stories, you put yourself in a state that is just challenging. Please. Please. I know it's difficult, I know it's painful, but you can make the changes now. That's the truth. It becomes more difficult as you grow older. Extremely difficult as you grow older. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've run not just out of time, I've run out of every, every kind, kind of time. Praise God. Can we stand on our feet and pray? Can we stand on our feet and pray, please?